Hello friends, this is lesson 11 of NLP, Natural Language Processing. In today's lesson, we are going to cover the following topics. First, we will see how to improve model performance and then select different train and test splits, cross validation, try different classifiers and last, we will talk about ensembling models. Now, let's start with the first topic and see how to improve model performance. Model performance means reducing the number of errors and increasing model performance means accuracy. In supervised machine learning, there we have classification and regression. In classification, especially, there we will be focusing more on model performance. It means accuracy of the model, how model is classifying the data into response values. So that's called classification, right? <coughs> So here, uh, we will be calculating the accuracy of the model and that, that means for us uh, how higher the values we are getting, then we will be sure the model is classifying the values correctly. Uh, then uh, here we will understand how to reduce the number of errors and how to improve the accuracy of model. These are the two questions, right? So for that, first we'll be discussing on model prediction errors and we'll see these types of errors what we have. Here we have two types of error friends. One type of error is called error due to bias and the second type is called error due to. Now let's see what is error due to bias. So bias is nothing but the difference between the actual values and predicted values. So this difference is called bias. And it, and it is a type of error. It means we have three, we have true values, also called as uh, actual values, and then we have the predicted values. Predicted values means the values which are predicted by the model, right? So we will take the mean or the average of true values, and then the mean or average of predicted values, and that difference is called that difference is called bias right for example here if we have the actual values means equal to 12 and the predicted value means is equal to 10 then the difference between values is nothing but 2 so this 2 is called bias right let's see what is error due to variance an error due to variance is dependent on variability of models prediction for different and same data. Once we are training the model and after that testing the model, we will apply different and same data to the model and evaluate our model, right? So there if the model is showing variability between these predictions, so that is called variance, right? We are applying different unseen data and the model is showing variability for one type of unseen data it is showing different output and for another type of unseen data again it is showing another uh, another kind uh, output so that is called variance or we can define it as how scattered are the predicted values from the true values or actual values that is also called as variance. Now what will happen here and what is our job, what we have to do as a, sci as a data scientist you should keep a balance between these two, two types of errors. Now we have to keep a balance between these two types of errors like bias and variance. If we cannot keep a balance between them what will happen then the model will underfeed or overfeed. So what do you mean by underfeed or overfeed here? Now, if we have high bias and low variance, then results underfeeding. Underfeeding means the model has seen less number of features and the model is not able to generalize well and it has memorized everything, right? But if the model has high variance and low bias, what will happen in this case results overfitting now the model can generalize but still it is overfitting the number of features are more and here the model is overfitted now let's see what is the solution for these problems 
some of the solutions are here listed friends the first solution is like select different twin and test place now what will happen if you are uh, taking the same data for training and testing the model the same data right so we are not splitting the data and we'll take the same data for training and testing the data the, the, the model what will happen here training accuracy is more but cannot generalize well because the model will see only few features and the model is trained with least number of features now when we are applying different unseen data so the model will not be able to generalize well right so in this case what will happen the model and the feeds right now what will happen another case if we if the model is trained and tested with different splits or quotation in this case we will not train the model and test with the same data but we will split the data in two partitions like two partitions right in this case two partitions one partition for training the model and another partition for testing the model now you will understand and you can compare with the first type of testing and training the model this type is better than the first type because it can generalize well compared to the first i mean compared to this type if it is trained and tested with the same data but here we have two splits trained with one partition and tested with another partition here the model generalizes better than the first type here increasing increases testing accuracy but with high variance accuracy is good but there is high variance high variance means the model variability is more for different unseen data the model is trained with more number of features because we have applied more number of features we have and now here the model overfitting the model uh, like uh, considered every in each and every point now the model overfits here so how to come this uh, how to overcome this problem then there is another method called cross validation cross validation here we have k full cross validation is the process of evaluating the performance of model by splitting the data into k number of train test portations now we don't have two portations we have k number of portations here in this type we had only two portations one one was used for training the model another one was used for testing the model but in this cross validation we will have k number of portations k number of portations are there like three portations we will have five portations or ten portation like that right so how can we train and test the model here it is used to overcome overfitting problem splitting up data sets iteratively and retaining models and averaging metrics right to get the best predictor of an error example is given here for example if k is equal to 5 means we'll create how many partitions five partitions are there now let's see the first iteration if the first iteration uh, see the first iteration here we will take the first partition as a testing data and the remaining four partitions will be considered as training data but if it is coming to the second iteration then this will be considered as a test partition this and the remaining these are used for training the model and train and third iteration this will be considered as a test data and the remaining this part and this part they are considered as training data same the same it will be trained and tested with the whole portations right but you have to consider friends will have or you will take a finite number of equal slices of data for example three slices five slices or ten slices and they are finite and they are equal slices now there is another type of solution also friends like different try different classifiers why we are trying different classifiers 
So we have many classifier strains. For example, if you consider only classification, I mean supervised classification model. So we have different algorithms here, like we have KNN logistic regression is there, like naive base uh, algorithm is there, uh, multinomial naive base is there. So many algorithms all day. Why we are using them? So actually, to compare the performance of multiple different models and evaluate which model suits your data and algorithm this is much important friend it is important to try different classifiers that is why we are trying different classifiers actually to see which classifier or model suits our data and algorithm right that is why we will try different classifiers like for example i will use ken Kenyan sniper at the same time i will use logistic regression i will use like uh, naive based classifiers support vector machine like i will use different these classifiers and see the result right and by comparing the result we can select the best one like here i say different classifiers provide different results and by comparing the results what will happen you can select the best model right and last here we have assembling models what do you mean by assembling models the process of combining multiple predictive models to produce a supermodel will take a supermodel and how can we take that that is more accurate than an individual model for example here in this case we apply different classifiers but here we'll combine those classifiers and create a new classifier called supermodel and how that will be created and you know that obviously that model will be more accurate than using individual ones right using parallel estimators each of which overfits if you are using individually these models so you know that because earlier we discussed the model overfits the data the average and averages the results to find a better classification model. So what will happen here? You will take the average of all the results, like combining multiple classifiers, and then we'll be taking the average result of those classifiers, and that model is called as super model. Let's see all these things practically, friends. You will better understand. Okay, first here we discussed about how to improve model performance and there we talked about reducing the number of errors and increasing model performance or accuracy and then we talked about two types of errors, bias and variance and we said bias is the difference between the actual and predicted values and here we said variance is nothing but how scatters or the predicted values from the true value not handling these two types of errors what will happen the model underfeed or overfeed when it is underfeeding underfeeding means high bias low variance and overfeeding here high variance and low bias right let me explain this through these figures and for example you consider this figure first and this figure the red circle is nothing but the target and these are the predicted values you see these are the predicted values and this is the target so, right now here in this case we have low bias it means the values are not that much scattered and they are closed there is no much difference between the actual and predicted values so this is the model and this one is the best one right you consider this one we have low bias but high spot the values are scattered right this is the case so you consider this one here we have high bias and low values it means the actual values and predicted values there is much difference between because you see that and still are not scattered they are close to far from the actual values uh, predicted values in here in this case you see the worst case we have high uh, variance and high bias they are far from the, the the actual values and at the same time they are sparse or they are scattered 
So as a data scientist, what is our job? We say we have to keep a balance between these two types of errors. If you are not keeping, so the model is overfitting or underfitting. Like here, underfitting and the variance. So one thing else you have to remember model complexity. If you are reducing one of these errors, what will happen? Another one is increasing. Like for example, I will be reducing the number of biases, right? If you are reducing the bias, what will happen? The same time variance is increasing. If you are considering this side, if you are reducing variance, what will happen? By increase. So here, variance is greater than bias. It means overfitting. If more than variance, underfitting. So this is our job. We have to find an optimal model. It means we have to keep the balance between these two and select an optimal in a model in which we have to keep a balance between the bias and variance right and that is called optimal model or optimal solution for that let's see here we see the solution different train and test splits now we will see if the model is trained with the same data and tested with the same data what will happen you see the model under feeds and the model will not be able to generalize well but if you are training and testing model with different partitions in that time model generalize better than the first type increase accuracy but high variance is there if in that case the model over feeds now i'm using pandas library state email.txt from this directory data sets right and at the same time, I will drop the null values if there is any. Yeah, you see here we have two columns. This is called the label, and this is called the messages. And these are nothing but the features. This is nothing but the response value or the output labels, right? now what will happen here i want to convert these two because here we have categorical data ham or spam i change zero spam to one right and for that i'm using here math function and that math function will assign the new values to that you see the value then you will better understand see they are converted into zero one zero means ham and one means spam right now i will train and test the model with the same data see i'm not splitting i'm taking just these things messages as x value features and y uh, sorry y is equal right and we have to convert them into numbers and for that i'm using okay term frequency and worse document frequency this one i'm using here you know that we talked in previous lectures about this type of vectorization it is converting the values into numbers they are vectorized now and then i'm using this function to transform the data and create document term matrix and here i'm using the model multinomial nivis model and then i'm training here the model with the same data and testing it with the same data right so let me execute this part and now let's see the performance of model here how it is showing the result and now accuracy of the model we will calculate and for that i'm using from scikit matrix and there is a module called accuracy score i'm calling that and providing these values the model is trained with the same and tested with the same data here you see yeah the accuracy is actually 98 percent right accuracy is 98 percent it is a high accuracy the model is tested and trained with the same data now let's see here training and testing with different splits i'm using the same data reading the same data you see and this time what will happen we'll split the data into training sets and testing sets right and you see that i'm reading from messages as a features 
and this one as a response values and test size is equal to 20% will be used for testing and the remaining 80% will be used for training right the same tfid vectorizer here i transform that and i'm using the same model and here the model is trained with different uh, portations and it is test it with different portations execute the spot yeah and now let's see the performance performance is reduced to how much 97 percent there we had 98 percent here we have 98 percent right and here we have how much 90 okay 97 percent one percent is reduced okay no problem but this model is compared to the first model it is better this model and this model if you apply Einstein data is performing well compared to this model because here the model is tested and uh, trained with the same data cannot generalize well and now we see cross validation in cross validation will take k number of portations right you consider this one here we have taken 10 portations this is for my paper friends for further reading you can refer the paper also and first if k is equal to 1 one fold what will happen the first portation is considered as a testing data the remaining all nine portations are used for training in the second fold what will happen the second portations will be used for testing the remaining will be for training the same it is happening for each and every portation it means the model is trained and tested with different portation so obviously you know that this type of training and testing is better compared to the first two types like training with the same data and testing with the same data and training and testing the data portations or if we have two portations now here i'm using the same model or oh, sorry this time i'm using this model okay decision tree you can use the same model also friends uh, here you see first of all i am splitting the data here we have features and then uh, the labels and i'm using vectorizer and the model is sorry here the data is transformed into document term matrix and then i'm using decision matrix here sorry classifier a number of questions will be asked is equal to three you know about uh, decision tree classifier if you want to read more and further you can refer my data science uh, lessons also on youtube friends and now i'm calling this function friend cross validation underscore score here i'm using it from model selection right and i'm providing my model this is my model right decision tree classifier and this is my data x value this is my y value i mean right this value and this value and number of k k is equal to how much let me consider first as uh, number of k value as five right k is equal to five and scoring will be considering the accuracy of the model so how many partitions we are creating five partitions and then here let's see yeah the model accuracy is reduced to 94 percent but this 94 is better than the first types of training and testing i mean these two types right here because the model generalizes better and it is uh, very good compared to the first two types here because we created how many portations five portations or there and the model is trained and tested with every portation so here the model generalizes well and there will be a uh, least number of variance less it means model variability is reduced right you can change this value also like to 10 we create 10 portations and you see cell so we are having this accuracy 94 percent okay then try different classifiers and the reason uh, sorry i told you why we are using different classifiers to compare their outputs i mean the results and then select the best one among them here i have used three classifiers friends these three classifiers you can use many classifiers i'm using here uh, logistic regression knn then multinomial 
knife uh, base classifier these three classifier classifiers I have used you can use as many as classifiers you can just include it here and create the model here and I'm using uh, splitting the data into training and testing splits and then vectorize them and I'm training my models and here the model will predict let's see three models I'm using here and see the result for them this is the result model 1 model 2 and model 3 and you see logistic regression the output for this one is the accuracy or performance the model is 98 percent and this one is 91 percent this one is 96 percent and you know better that this accuracy is the highest accuracy and logistic regression suits our data in it one this will be considered as a base model and now assembling what do you mean by assembling combining multiple predictive models and then creating a new super model by taking the average of their results now let's see this practically I'm reading the data and then I'm just converting the values into zeros and ones and then see here uh, I just split the data this is my training uh, features these are the labels vectorize and transform the data and now you see here I just take three models again here friends three classifiers you can include as many as you want uh, it depends on the speed of your computer and also the size of your data if uh, speed is less then it is better to use like three or five uh, three four five like that models if you want more then you just include it here uh, first you have to import them then include it here like linear support vector classifier you can take this classifier you can take can and you can take uh, here I have taken only these three right three models are there and then it will be converted into data frame here I'm converting it into data frame and I will consider only features name and also number of folds and accuracy of the model and that will be getting from this data the same time here it is applied cross validation and this is the model model comes from this list of models one by one and the accuracy of that will be calculated and, and then we will see the result here yeah so this is the accuracy for three models right 93 percent 96 percent and 96 percent right now what will happen you will take the average of these three models and creating a new model and that model is called super model and the process is called assembling yeah see i'm taking the average of all the values and that is actually equal to 95 percent and this is called my super model and the process of this is called ensemble so i hope you understood all these things friends we discussed uh, we talked about how to improve model performance and different types of errors we talked so uh, ensembling different classifiers why we are using and then cross validation which is very important and i hope you understood all those things and then selecting the data training the data with uh, different portions same portation right and then we talked about overfitting and feeding two types of error bias and variance and these were all the topics we promised hope you understood friends thanks